Traffic Mornings with Aggie. Good morning, people of the land. It is bang on 7.30 this morning on this Wednesday morning, and we've come from one interview and go straight to the next. So it goes from one topic to the next. That's how we do it this morning. Uh, the National Party announced that uh, if it becomes the government in the next election, it will ban gang patches and an insignia, stop gang members from gathering and charge people who put gang-related content online. So joining us to talk more on this issue uh, is the National Party, specific people spokesperson, Dr. Shane Rick. And with that, we say good morning, Shane, and welcome back to the show. Morning, Levi. Good morning. Yeah. Sorry, I've just uh, just put you on. You, we can hear you right, eh, Shane? Yeah, all oh, good, perfect. Levi. All, all good. Hey, thank you for so much for joining the show this morning, taking time out of your morning. Um, I wanted to get straight into it with you this morning. Now, the, the, national, the national Party's policy to, to ban um, gang insignia and uh, criminalise the, the posting of gang-related content online has received a bit of pushback. Um, and I guess the argument, the main argument against that so far has been free speech. So I already just wanted to see uh, what your thoughts were on that. So the Bill of Rights says that uh, some rights trump other rights and uh, your right to be safe, uh, your right to not be physically harmed uh, often can trump the right to freedom of expression. And so there's a hierarchy of rights uh, under the Bill of Rights Act. So while we'd always want to be cautious when you bring in any policies that will have some impact on people's right, rights mm-hmm. of association, rights of freedom, rights of movement, um, on a balance when you take into account other rights, the rights to protection of your person, the right to protection of your uh, personal property, uh, those rights can often trump uh, some of the some of the others. And so we're comfortable. We're comfortable with the experience overseas, uh, particularly out of Australia, uh, where there's been some impact. And indeed, we've seen the police association uh, say uh, these are certainly worth exploring. And in the crisis that we have uh, of crime and gang related crime, uh, these are four policies, in fact, more than four policies uh, that are worth exploring. Mm, yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot with that. Eh? And uh, generally, um, Shane, when you see these things going on, is it is it easier to look overseas just to see what other people are doing? Is that a good way to sort of look at models for future references? So what we don't want to do is reinvent the wheel. And if there are some learnings that we can take from offshore, we should start with that and then see yeah. how that might modify to our own cultural environment. Uh, so it's off, often a good testing area. Uh, if we haven't explored it itself, we've, we've, we've had some new initiatives ourselves, but uh, these have often been deployed offshore for many years. And we do that with a lot of policies. We look at what's happened offshore, how that might be suitable or not, and then how it might be modified to New Zealand environment. Yeah, I, I noticed the gangs, um, that, that conversation quite, came quite strong, I noticed. And so I wanted to think, to, I wanted to see what your thoughts were on this. And I'm wondering, do you think comments against gangs, and, and I'm Weary of the way I use that term, but the comments against gangs from the National Party, do you think it will agitate gangs if the National win um, our next ele- uh, uh, the next election? Uh, sorry, my English this morning. The next election, there we go, um, as opposed to aiding and stopping the violence, do you think it just m- may agitate them a little bit more? You, do you see where I'm going with this? I, I do. Our, our purpose is not to agitate or non-agitate gangs. Our purpose is to keep people safe and to keep their, their personal property safe as well. Uh, if as a byproduct of that, uh, gangs are agitated, then uh, yes, of course, we want a harmonious relationship as much mm. as possible. Uh, but our goal is not to agitate or, or not agitate gangs. Our goal is to keep people safe. And if on the way... Uh, that should cause some anxiety, then they need to look at the behaviour that they're uh, they're undertaking that's creating that anxiety. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if the if the I guess the, the, they want to make a law to ban sort of every, anything that goes online. At that, does it mean that National wants to work with gangs, or is everything more just opposed to what they're doing? You know what I mean? No, no, we'll always want to work uh, with gangs. We'll always want to work with the community, but we'll need to be very clear what our outcomes are. Yeah. Uh, our outcomes are, are not just to have a nice discussion. Our outcomes are to keep people safe, to keep their personal property safe. And so how we can collaborate uh, towards that end, but be very clear, that is the end that we're getting to. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. Um, and I'm wondering how can our government, there's a whole lot going on in the community at the moment, especially in Auckland. And I'm wondering how our government right now, or police or community leaders, uh, be dealing with Auckland's recent gun violence in gangs. So uh, this is where we rely on the community who have a reach often beyond what Wellington politicians can reach. And uh, to have that dialogue, to have that conversation, to make it very clear that it's unacceptable, what solutions might they have uh, that could 
uh, address the outcomes that we want to address. Uh, here's where we want to get to. H how can you help us get there? Is this confrontation? It's just completely confrontational. Is there no collaboration whatsoever? Because I'm pretty sure it doesn't work for you uh, for us to be increasing your incarceration rates and, and restricting uh, some of your, your rights, basically. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's not good for you. Uh, it's not actually good for us. But again, be clear, here's where we need to, got to get to. Uh, you have some responsibility for these outcomes. Can we work with you? And if so, what solutions have you got? What solutions have we got? How can we how can we tone, tone this all down? And that's been done before where we've met with senior, often older gang leaders and, and said to them, expressed to them, you need to tone this down. Uh, this this is an escalation. It's too much. Mm. There are some things you can control. There are some things that we can do with legislation. Uh, let's find what the middle ground is. Yeah. So the would nationals' comments uh, to ban gang insignia and all that is, is that um, in response to the recent shootings that's been happening in Auckland and all those things? So we've been calling for a toughening up on gangs for quite a while now, and it's all come to a peak with the minister moving on. Yeah. And uh, even the government saying the focus on, on police at the moment is not where they want it to be. So uh, over quite a while, we've been talking about fire protection orders, uh, firearms protection orders, uh, prohibition orders. And uh, this is nothing new. This is no uh, reflex response here in this past a few weeks to the 23 related serious uh, offending. Uh, we've been talking about this for years, but it's come to a peak here now. Yeah, no, and, and mentioning the minister, um, Shane, uh, the National Party says replacing Porter Williams as police minister reflects a lack of leadership of a time when gang activity and violence is escalating. And I guess what my thing is, why why have National put those comments out there? What's the point of putting comments out there for? Because uh, the police um, receive assistance financial and general policy settings uh, from the lead minister who in turn receives guidance from caucus and the prime minister and so that guidance which has been failing of late uh, needs to come from the top uh, through that pathway and uh, clearly the labor government agree as well because they repositioned the minister as i said they they believe the focus has been lost and so uh, on one level we don't want to focus on the uh, hard-working public service association and all our police officers they're taking instructions uh, with the uh, infrastructure that they have uh, it's for those who are setting the policies uh, that uh, we're directing our attention saying this is not good enough New Zealanders believe it's not good enough um, there, need, there needs to be a, a change to the policy settings yeah Dr Chen I guess I'll leave you with this what do we need what do we better need for Aotearoa at the moment then with all those that's going on with gangs with the shootings with the ram raids what more do we need uh, or, or what do we need that we don't even have so uh, there's a short term and a long term. In the short term, we need to keep people safe. We need to keep their property safe. And the suggestions we brought forward uh, address that. In the long term, we need to go one layer back and look at the causative agents that are causing these behaviours. Poverty, uh, an ability to pay rent, uh, inability to buy food, cost of living. These are the social drivers behind crime. And I think if we just focus on uh, the topic of the moment, the ram rate of the moment, the firearm of the moment, uh, we, we won't be looking further back as to, well, how did it come to be in that situation? What Why are these children uh, undertaking ram raids? Uh, where is the family? Uh, how do we help that? So it's a two-pronged approach. It's, it's the urgency of the moment that is causing self-harm right now. And wrapped around that, we're also going to need to uh, have some attention towards the social determinants that are causing those behaviours. Yeah, now we really appreciate your comments this morning, Dr. Shane Ritchie. There's a, there's a whole lot going on uh, in our world at the moment. This is just one of the many things that's actually probably quite the frustration for the community. So appreciate your comments and appreciate you coming onto the show this morning, Dr. Shane Ritchie. Uh, Kia pai tora. Stay well. Thank you.